The Weedham Snow Road is a seasonal road that is constructed each winter to provide access to the remote creek communities in northern Ontario, Canada. The road spans over 190 kilometers and is only open for a few months each year, typically from January to March, when the temperature drops enough to allow the road to be constructed on the frozen rivers and lakes. Due to hazardous conditions, weather conditions, condition of the ice, the road opens and closes often during the brief period that it has been constructed. So you have to be flexible if you want to be able to make this trip. During my own preparations, the road had closed and opened a couple of times. And once I saw it was open, I took my opportunity to go. I've always wanted to overland with my vehicle to a remote community such as this. I fear that with climate change, that this type of travel will soon disappear. Filling up with gas can be tricky sometimes in northern wilderness areas. Sometimes you have access to different grades of gasoline. Other times you only have one grade of gasoline that you have access to. And much of the time, gasoline is only available to you between certain hours of the day, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., for example. Seeing that this was the first time I've ever driven on the snow and ice road and going to this remote community, I decided to stay in hotels this time around, kind of scope out the area. If I had to do it again, I would not have stayed at this hotel. But it did entice me to leave as early as possible the next morning. first landmark is the Apatibi Canyon Power Station. The canyon spans over 160 kilometers and is up to 500 feet deep, making it one of the largest canyons in North America. And it cuts through Precambrian rock formations that are over 2.7 billion years old. The canyon is also home to several hydroelectric power stations. The road is used by locals, government officials, and businesses to transport supplies, goods, and people to and from the remote communities. Upon getting to the snow road, you have to stop and check in. They need to know that people make it all the way through. Technically, you're not allowed to stop and stay anywhere on the road. So you're supposed to just travel through and get to the checkout post at the other end. Driving the road is precarious. The attendant told me that these two vehicles were in a head-on collision just yesterday due to weather conditions and a great rate of speed. Traveling on the Weedham Snow Road is a unique and thrilling experience as you get to see some of the most beautiful and untouched winter landscapes in the world. The road is surrounded by vast snow-covered forests, frozen rivers and lakes, and you can witness some incredible wildlife if you're lucky, including moose, wolves, and lynx. However, the road can also be dangerous as the weather and road conditions can change quickly and the road is only accessible by certain types of vehicles, such as snowmobiles and 4x4 trucks. It's essential to take all necessary precautions and have the right equipment and knowledge to travel the road safely. Overall, the Wheatum Snow Road is an incredible feat of engineering and a vital lifeline for the remote Cree communities it serves.
At the north end of the Weedham Snow and Ice Road is the Moose River Delta, where you first come upon the Cree village of Moose Factory, which is on an island. From there, you cross the frozen river to get to the Cree village of Musini. This part here seemed a little sketchy to me, but I hear it's normal. There was a crack in the ice where water was flowing through. The highlight of the trip was driving over kilometers of frozen river ice on the Moose and French rivers. It's a surreal experience. and I made it just in time. As I was coming in further down the road, a big storm blew in and they had to close the road again due to whiteout conditions and many accidents. In fact, the hotel I was staying at started to fill up because of all the travelers that couldn't travel in either direction because the road was closed. But my adventure was just about to begin. I had arranged to meet a local resident to take me trapping and to see some traditional Cree skills. And he told me to make sure that I dress warmly. So this is what I did. While in Musini, I had the privilege of meeting Randy Coda, a First Nation person of Algonquin and Irish descent, and his Cree wife, Betty. They offer traditional Cree experiences such as hunting, trapping, and survival skills, and are passionate about sharing their culture with visitors. I'll be making a whole other video just on my time with Randy, as I think it deserves its own video. This is called a box trap for a marten. What happens is that you have the head come through and it'll take a piece of bait back there. Many times it's beaver, but they climb up the little edge here. They want to make sure it's far away from trees around so it doesn't hop on. That's for the older style trap, but for this one it has no choice but to come in that way. We've run into a couple of issues here. Number one, we lost the toboggan. It broke off the back here. And number two, we got into some deep snow. A little deep, eh? River and that way would be towards towards James Bay. It's really important that we have a lot of pride in when we, when we put our fur up to help her in, to have it nice and straight and tidy. So, and that's it. After such an exhilarating day, I was looking forward to some rest, but I've always wanted to see the Aurora Borealis and I've never had the opportunity. And this night didn't look like I was going to have any luck until I was woken up by an alert from an Aurora tracking app that I had on my phone. And for the first time, I got to see the Aurora Borealis with my own eyes. On the day I was leaving, it wasn't as cold as the previous days, 
but my car had been sitting for many days without having turned on. So I have a oil pan heater that I thought I could power with my portable electric generator. Unfortunately, the electric generator had its own ideas. I had to bring the generator into the hotel to warm it up and only after a couple of hours did it finally start working again. Had I relied on this while I was trying to camp in the wilderness and not have any place to warm up, I would have been in a lot of trouble. Thanks for joining me on this incredible journey through Cree country. Until next time, stay warm and safe in the great Canadian wilderness.